This happened over a year ago. I remember that I left my family home just before lunchtime to head off to my part-time job. I always walked to work. I was saving for a car at the time, but the walk wasn't exactly a long one. It was a pretty dull one though. I grew up in a really rural place. There were fields and fields as far as the eye could see. The houses in my area were well spaced out and sparse too, which meant that there wasn't a whole lot of passing traffic. It was perpetually quiet. There wasn't ever much to look at on my commute by foot. Like I said, fields, a few houses, and there was a small cemetery along the way. On the day that this took place, there were no people on the streets and no passing cars. It was a real quiet day. I didn't feel like... I didn't feel with it that day either. Something was off. It was like I was constantly being absent-minded. I think I was a little overtired because the shift I had had the night before was pretty hard, as far as part-time work goes. I was lazily marching my way to work, not thinking about anything in particular. And that was when I noticed something. There was someone behind me. Well, I felt as if there was someone directly behind me. I don't know when this person began to tell me because I hadn't been paying attention. I will have to explain a little about my commute at this stage for the next part of my experience to make sense. The road that I walked along to work was in a straight line. That straight line runs through the middle of all those open fields I spoke about, and most importantly of all, my journey along that straight line pretty much begins at the moment I set foot outside of my front door. So. There were no houses, buildings, winding roads, hidden lanes, alleys, or anything for someone to emerge from or join me on my walk without me likely noticing it. What I mean to say is everything was visible. If there was someone in a field a mile away, I would have seen them coming in pretty much any direction. So, how I ended up with someone tailing me without me realizing was something highly unusual to me. While I continued walking, I wondered how long this person had been following me for. When I thought about it a bit more, I realized that the guy behind was now closing the gap between us. Whoever was behind was now speeding up. Before I even took a look behind me, I thought that it might be a male. His footsteps were getting faster and faster, so I decided to try and attempt a sly look over my shoulder to see who I was dealing with. However, when I looked back behind me, I noticed that there was no one there. That's crazy, I remember thinking. I stopped and turned around so that I could look back and the strangest thing happened. I felt as if someone was staring at me, but there was no one in sight. I knew something was looking at me. I could sense it, some innate part of me knew that I wasn't alone. Something was there with me. I just couldn't see it. I immediately thought that I needed to get out of there and fast. I turned to leave, but my body resisted. I don't know if that was due to shock, surprise, or fear, but I couldn't move a muscle. My back then felt cold. The chills I felt weren't limited to my back, though. It was like an ill wind was flowing through me. I don't expect anyone to understand what I'm about to say next, but this is the best way I can describe it. It was like my internal organs were cold. It was like cold hands were rummaging around my insides and wrapping cold fingers around my beating heart. I needed to get out of there, and fast. Something was seriously wrong. I thought that if I didn't figure out how to get out of there, then something bad would happen. But in the end, I couldn't move. It was like this unseen person was holding me in place. I could almost feel arms around my neck. It felt disgusting. And then suddenly I was released. I sprinted. As fast as I could from the scene, it took place, while periodically looking behind me as I ran. I headed to my part-time job, and all the while, the weird sensation I felt around my neck did not subside. My neck felt very uncomfortable that day. 
I tried not to think about it. I tried to chant this sutra healing chant in my head while I walked. My aunt taught me it when I was little. I took some medicine at work, but my pain didn't go away. After I had some of my lunch, I ended up throwing up in the bathroom. It was really embarrassing. I finished work by the evening, and when my day of work was done, I still didn't feel any better. I had no appetite, so I went to bed without dinner. I didn't sleep well that night. I was shivering in bed, and my neck just felt terrible. After an hour or two of light sleep, I woke up and I threw up again. I was really concerned about my health for a while there, but after about a week I managed to return to my usual self. I was really relieved. I really was worried about myself back then. I didn't know what I could do. I was pretty naive, I guess. I have walked along that road many times since that day, but I've never encountered the same thing again. I've thought about it a little more, and maybe what I experienced was some kind of spirit passing through. I don't know. It definitely feels like the whole thing was paranormal. I mean, I'm no expert, so if anyone knows what that might have been, and if I should be worried, or should have done something, then I'm all ears. Maybe it was a brief possession. I'm fine now, though. I mean, I think I am. This happened when I was younger. I had a part-time job where I was collecting money for a newspaper delivery company. It was a pretty okay job. I didn't hate it. But I will tell you about one of the reasons why I quit the job. It was summer and a hot day. Whenever it's hot, I find myself easily irritable. I'm guessing you can relate. I was sent to collect a payment in a large apartment block. I had been doing the job for a while and I had met a lot of different kinds of people and their families. People can be so different. Some were extremely wary of people they didn't know asking for money. When they realized who I was and why I was there, they would only hand over the money through a gap in the door, and they kept the chain on, the door too. These people seem incredibly cautious of others, and then you get the ones who seem not to care at all. I have been met by housewives wearing next to nothing. It was really eye-opening for a young man like me at the time. There was one apartment that I don't ever want to go back to. I rang the doorbell, like I usually did, and I heard a child's voice, and then the door unlocked. The child opened the door, a crack, and then stared at me and shouted back into the house, Mom, there's a strange old man at the door. I thought, hey, come on, kid. I'm not strange, and I'm not no old man. What the hell? The boy's mother then came walking down the hall, smiling and apologizing to me. She told her son that I wasn't a strange old man, and not to say that about me. I noticed that there were a lot of children in that house. They were running around in the back. Their mother, I guess, went in search of her purse for payment. I wasn't the best with children at the time, so I was a little irritated. Also, the heat, like I said before. The door was opened a little more at that point, and that was the moment I noticed something strange. There was a little girl of about three years of age lying on the floor just in front of the shoe rack by the front door. I was shocked that I didn't notice her lying there before. The mother came back to the door to provide payment. As I was absentmindedly getting everything in order, I began to wonder about that mother. Was there something wrong with her? I mean, why was she letting her daughter take a nap by the shoe rack with all those kids running around? Didn't she care? I handed over the change and thanked the woman for her custom. I watched as she went to take a step backwards to close the door. As I watched, I couldn't help but shout out, Ah! Watch out! Because it seemed to me that she was unaware that she was about to plant her foot right on her sleeping child. 
The woman fixed me with a confused stare and then planted her foot. I winced as I was sure that I was about to hear that little girl start wailing. But I didn't hear a thing though. The little girl was sleeping there as if nothing had happened. I couldn't believe what I had just seen. It took me a second or two to consider that I might have seen something paranormal. That child was there, but wasn't there. It was like I was the only one who could see her. The housewife was staring at me with this inquisitive look that slowly turned into an almost menacing glare. I don't know if that was my own sense of paranoia or not. I can't trust that part of my memory, but I can trust seeing that little girl lying there that no one else seemed to see, especially the homeowner. I had to get away from that place. I called my boss and said that I was sick, and I took the afternoon off. I ended up becoming a bit sick after that. I'm not sure if it's related or not. I think I saw a ghost that day. I wondered if something happened in that doorway to that little girl. Maybe an angry parent coming home from work was to blame. I don't know. I mean, this is all speculation from me at this point. Still, it was very creepy. But nowadays, it feels more sad or concerning to me than a scary memory. I heard this from my aunt. She worked in a hospital her whole career. As you can imagine, she has seen and experienced a lot. One night, my aunt told me about when she first became a nurse. She said that the hardest part of her job was the night shift. The way she described her job and her duties made it sound like she was incredibly busy. She had to make regular rounds all throughout the night and respond to patients and the sudden changes in their condition. She found it hard to adjust to the night shift since her body was used to sleeping while she would be working, but on top of that, she said that being largely alone in a dark hospital at night was very creepy. She felt like this as a new nurse and figured that she would just adjust eventually. One night she was making her rounds along the dark hospital ward. She would look in on the patients as she passed by to see how they were. When she arrived at one room on the third floor, she noticed a patient sitting upright, staring blankly at the window. The patient was an elderly man in his 80s. The elderly man noticed that my aunt was standing in the doorway of his room watching him, so he called out, Is it Nozaki-san on night duty tonight? He never turned away from looking out the window, but since it was dark, my aunt could see his face in the reflection, and he seemed to be grinning. My aunt then encouraged him to lie back down on the bed and get some rest. It wasn't the first time that she had heard someone say that. Since she started working the night shift, she had heard the patients talking about this Nozaki-san. When someone mentioned Nozaki-san, it was usually to say something positive. One patient even said that Nozaki-san was much better than her at her job. And my aunt wasn't the type to develop professional jealousy. She's honestly so placid and patient. But due to the patients constantly referencing this other doctor or nurse, she decided to make an effort to meet them. She looked through the logs and registers, but couldn't find this Nozaki-san anywhere on the sign-in sheets that the doctors and nurses were supposed to sign when they started their shifts. As far as she knew, there was no one working on her ward by that name. But since she was still relatively new to her role, she guessed that there must have been some senior doctors and nurses working the ward that she hadn't met yet, so she didn't think much of it. After making sure the elderly man was back lying down in his bed, she returned to the nurse's station. A senior nurse was there, and she and my aunt entered into some casual conversation. My aunt used that opportunity to bring up the enigmatic Nozaki-san. She said the senior nurse froze for a couple of seconds. She said that you could have heard a pin drop on that ward and then turned to my aunt with a very troubled look on her face. Well, it's interesting that you mention Nozaki-san. 
She used to work here until about a year ago. She took her own life. This kind of thing comes up every once in a while for some reason. My aunt was floored by that. She said that it chilled her to the core, but then she hoped that it was some kind of mistake. Perhaps the nurse had misheard her or something. So then my aunt brought up the conversation that she had with the elderly man. The nurse then said, That happens here a lot lately. My aunt was surprised by this flippant and curt response. The nurse apparently had a stony expression as she said it. My aunt never forgot that exchange, and since that night, she continued to hear the name Nozaki-san on the ward, especially on her night shifts. It wasn't just the elderly man, but also young male patients and even children. Every time she heard that name, she felt uneasy. These patients were talking about someone who was no longer here as if though they were still working at the hospital. It didn't feel right. It was as if though they could still see Nozaki-san, as if she had never left. My aunt considered quitting her job because she was so creeped out by what was happening. But instead of quitting, she grew into her role and adapted to life on the ward. Soon, that uneasy feeling and the fear that she felt started to fade. She still heard the name Nozaki-san on the ward, but didn't get creeped out like she used to. She just thought to herself, oh, here we go again. She thought about it differently, too. Since Nozaki-san was a senior nurse who used to work the wards, maybe her spirit is still present to watch over her patients. Maybe it didn't need to be creepy. She went forward trying to think of it as a positive thing. As I was listening to the story my aunt was telling me, I thought, that's a nice story. Maybe all ghosts aren't really all that bad. And I was smiling as my aunt continued. My aunt noticed my smile, and she nodded at me and smiled back too and said, Yeah, I was smiling like that too when I came to that realization. But then I found out something pretty disturbing. All the patients who asked me about Nozaki-san or if she was working that night, after a couple of days, they would pass away. It seemed as if though seeing her or talking about her was an incredibly bad omen. It was a signal that the end was coming. I don't know. There's something about that that seems so sinister. Like Nozaki-san was that hospital's grim reaper. This all started way back when I was an elementary school student. I would catch the bus to school every morning back then. This wasn't a school bus, by the way. This was just the regular bus. One day I saw someone that looked so incredibly out of place that it truly shocked me. That person was actually on the bus with us. At first glance, I thought that this mysterious passenger might have just been some homeless person who wandered on board. I saw them first when their back faced me. From behind, I remember that they were wearing a big filthy looking trench coat. They had a paper bag and an umbrella which looked like it had several holes in it. At the time I thought that that person could be female, and that was largely based on the length of the hair of that individual. She, I guess, had her hair styled in a rock solid fashion. It was as if she had hairsprayed it from the front of her head all the way to the back. It was a very unusual look. I thought that I better not stare at it. I was always told not to stare. She made it hard though because she really stood out to me. I decided to look back and see if my sister, who was a few years older than me and obviously didn't want to sit with me on the bus, had noticed her. My sister caught my glance and looked at me with this kind of mock look of disgust on her face so I knew that she had noticed the person that I had seen. The adults on the bus didn't seem to be aware of that strange woman. The atmosphere in the bus didn't change. It was as if no one was aware. It was the same as usual. When we got off at the bus at our stop and made it home, me and my sister told our mum about the person we saw on the bus, 
and we even gave her a nickname, Hair Woman. Mum, of course, wasn't that interested in what we were telling her. Now, you're probably thinking, wow, great story, you saw a woman on a bus who looked a little unusual when you were a kid. Well done. Well, what if I told you that? That wasn't the only time I saw that woman. It's been 20 years since that first encounter on the bus, and I keep seeing that woman. It's like she has this incredible ability to blend into everyday life without being detected. I always end up finding her, but I never piece together how she arrived at wherever I am without me noticing. The first time I saw her was in our rural village in Tohoku, and the second time I saw her was in the Kanto region. The third time I saw her was tonight. In fact, I'm currently in the Chubu region. It is without a doubt the same person each time. I mean, you can't miss her. She's always dressed the same. And I'm pretty certain that there aren't three of her up and down the country. I just don't get why I'm always seeing her, and it really does play on my mind. I saw her tonight, and she was walking in the rain. She had that same tattered umbrella that I saw when I was a kid, but she didn't use it. Why not? I find myself asking questions like that whenever I'm not concentrating on something. I want to make something clear though. When I see her, I don't get scared. I don't feel anything other than, oh, there she is again. I don't really get shocked, but I do definitely notice her, and I don't get why. Maybe because she looks the same whether it's midsummer, midday, middle of the rain, downtown in a rural area, she's always the same. So I'm here to ask if anyone else has seen her. I feel like I'm talking about that dream guy. Ever dream this man, do you remember that? Not that though, she is out there. Look for her. Please tell me if anyone has seen her, please. Maybe I should try and interact with her next time. I don't know. I want to share with you the first experience I ever had with the paranormal. Up until this happened, I didn't believe. I wasn't believer before, but I am now. I got into a Tokyo university, and I moved to the big city from my home, town, mid-March. I got a nice apartment. Well, it was nice enough for what I could afford. My best friend, who went to the same high school as me, also landed a move to Tokyo, but at a different university. We didn't live far away from one another, and that was really great. We gave each other our spare keys so that we could always come over to hang out at any time. We both enjoyed living alone, so we weren't over one another's place every day, but it was great when we hung out. We felt so free, you know? We were just two country boys who were living it up in the big city. We never really told one another when we might be coming over. We just let ourselves in. On the day that this happened, I came home from my part-time job at around 4.30pm and the door to my apartment was unlocked. I pushed it open and I thought to myself, oh, did you come over? With that in mind, I shouted out to my friend, hey, what are you doing, pal? Or something like that. And then I heard a reply coming from the back. It was short and it was probably, hey. I need to explain the layout of my apartment for this next part. As soon as you open the door to my apartment, the bathroom is on the right and the toilet is on the left. They were separate, as they often are in Japan. If you go straight, you see the dining area, and behind there's a sliding door which leads to the living room. Since I had an agreement with my friend that we could stop by one another's apartments at any time, it wasn't super rare to find him in my place when I got home. We were both really into a game called Pez Winning Eleven. He beat me the last time he came over, so I was eager to take my revenge that day. I quickly took off my shoes and headed in through the dining area and then I pulled open the sliding door to the living room, but he wasn't there. Where are you hiding? I called out. I looked all over for him, in this elaborate kind of act I was putting on. I looked in the wardrobe, under the bed, etc., but he was nowhere to be seen. I figured he was pranking me, so I said, Okay, I give up. Where are you hiding? 
once again there was no reply. Okay, maybe he just didn't hear me, I thought to myself. With that in mind, I shouted out, Hey! Really loud that time. Then I heard a voice. A voice that didn't belong to my friend. A voice that replied in a quiet, distant tone with words I couldn't quite make out. They sounded so muffled, but one thing for sure was, that voice definitely belonged to a woman. And it sounded like it was just by the front door, towards the toilet. I felt really confused, but I still kind of believed that it could have been my friend pranking me. So I headed towards the toilet, and when I got there, I realized that the light was on. I could have sworn that the light wasn't on when I got home. I always got in trouble for leaving the lights on when I was a kid, so I have a habit of turning them off when I leave the room. At that point, I realized that it couldn't have been my friend messing with me. Goosebumps came instantly. I also felt chills. It was like all the hair on the back of my neck stood on end. Then my back began to tingle, and I broke out in a sweat. It was a really weird bunch of reactions. My mind was firing off questions that I couldn't answer, like, Who's in there? What's going on? What should I do? Just as I thought that it couldn't get more frightening, the unimaginable happened. The door to the toilet slowly began to creak open. I felt like I was about to lose my mind through fear. I was so scared, I was about to see something. But even though I thought that, I couldn't bring myself to look away from the door. The door crept open to about a 45 degrees angle. And when it was that wide open, I was able to see the shadow of a person. I froze in horror as I saw that dark shadowy silhouette emerge from behind the door. It was coming out of the toilet room and coming for me. I realized in that moment that there was nothing I could do to stop it. I felt so utterly helpless and powerless. All I could do was watch and tremble with fear. I don't know what was going on, but I felt for sure that something was happening to me. I don't know if I have the right words to explain what happened, but I will try. It was like the room began to change shape, and I felt for certain that something was about to happen to me. I don't know if that's something like a possession, or even something as final as death, but I will tell you that there was a very real and imminent threat which made me fear for my life. The shadow began to extend. It grew bigger and bigger by each passing second. Soon it was beyond the crack in the door, and I knew as soon as the shadow was fully out, whatever was going to happen would happen. And then I heard a noise. The front door was thrown open, and I heard my friend saying to me, Yo, you're back from work. The bathroom light went out, and I dropped to my knees. I heard myself let out this primal scream I don't think I could ever replicate for any amount of money. It was like a scream of pure relief. Then I scrambled to my feet and got away from the toilet door. My friend, of course, asked me what was happening, and since we're best friends, I told him the truth. Telling him did make me feel less frightened somehow, and after I calmed down a little bit, we decided to both go back to the toilet to see if we could see anything unusual. When we got back there, the door was open, a lot wider than it was the last time I saw it. It had gone beyond that 45 degree angle I mentioned earlier. I don't think that was a good sign, if I'm being honest. Beyond the door being a little more open than I'd like to see after an experience like that, there was nothing of note in the toilet room itself. I stayed with my friend that night, and I'm still staying with him. I'm trying to get out of my agreement with the real estate agent. I'm hoping that I can still get my security deposit back. I don't know what happened in that apartment, but I think it was something bad. I have a feeling that there's something with a grudge that still manifests its energy there. It scares the hell out of me when I remember what I saw that day. I heard this story from one of my mountain climbing friends. He is really into mountain climbing and has climbed and conquered many in his time and I'm part of the same club as he is. 
He told me about this one club that he did where he had to pay at this parking spot a kind of toll to climb. He said that the guy who had paid took down his address and information in case of an emergency. He arrived at 8 a.m., which is way later than usual for him. He was climbing alone that day, and he was preparing himself. The elevation was high, but since he knew that he would be starting late, he decided before arriving that he'd spend the night at the summit. The guy who took payment from him told him that there was an unmanned cabin up there which he would be more than welcome to use. He liked that idea more than his tent. He felt like because of that, he could really take his time and enjoy the climbing experience. He climbed to the summit without incident and took in all the gorgeous views. He was the only one at the summit and the cabin was empty. He brewed some coffee, looked out over the mountain at nature's splendor and watched the sunset as evening arrived. It started to get darker and chillier so he headed into the cabin. He brought some alcohol with him and had a little drink while preparing dinner and listening to the radio. He was really tired after dinner, drinking and hiking and all that and he decided to head to bed and get some sleep so he could start his descent early in the morning. He turned off the lantern and the cabin was plunged in darkness. He said that he had no issue falling asleep due to his tiredness. In the middle of the night, he awoke to a strange sound. It sounded like the door was rattling. It spooked him a bit because when he checked the weather forecast, it didn't seem like it was going to be a particularly windy night. He listened closely to the sound and soon realized that it wasn't the sound of the wind, it was something else. It sounded to him like the sound of someone trying the door and the sound of people walking around. You know when you are in the dark and you're groping for something, like the door handle? He said it sounded just like that. A quick look at his watch told him that it was past 2 a.m. He didn't think that another climber would be attempting the mountain at this time of night in the dark. Could there really be anyone out there that late? I know that some mountains are connected by ranges and you can hike or climb from one to another, but that mountain wasn't like this. For one, you needed to pay the toll at the parking lot, and secondly, there wasn't another mountain in the area. It was just one mountain with one climbing route. So he said based on what he knew and his experience, there should be no one out there. He said it was impossible, and that terrified him. He lay in his sleeping bag, shaking. He couldn't summon up the courage to leave it, and he pretended to be asleep but kept his eyes slightly open, waiting and hoping the noise from outside the cabin door would stop or go away. His hopes weren't answered. After a few moments, he heard the sound of the door creaking open, and the sound was deafening. He said he was praying deep within his heart when he heard that sound. Sweat had begun to form on his brow, and his shaking showed no sign of subsiding. He opened his eyes slightly wider, and he said that he saw four figures by the open door, illuminated by the light of a shadowy moon. A boy, a girl, a man and a woman. They were wearing tattered and torn clothing. They carried no flashlights or lanterns with them, and they seemed to be completely used to the dark. They entered the cabin. My friend closed his eyes and prayed and prayed that they go away. He was terrified of this family. They defied all logic that he put his faith into. There was no way that they could be there, yet there they were. And now they were in the cabin with him. He heard footsteps creeping around the wooden flooring. They appeared to be looking for something. Agonizing seconds crawled by, and my friend stayed as still as he could to not alert them to his presence. Then, just as quickly as they had arrived, they left without conversation and without closing the cabin door. He said that as soon as he saw them go, he lost consciousness. I think he may have fainted through fear. And as soon as he woke, he hurriedly threw all of his things into his bag and began his descent. I'm not sure if he checked if anything was missing or not, but that would have been one of the first things that I would have done. He got dressed and quickly prepped for the descent. He went down the mountain as fast as he could, and he was still terrified by his nightly visitors. He didn't want to see them in the day. There was something about that family that truly terrified him. When he got to the bottom, he spoke to the man at the toll booth and told him about his experience. He said it wouldn't have been right not to mention what happened. He didn't care if it made him look dumb or scared. 
The toll booth guy told him that he was the only one on the mountain that night and that disturbed him. He wondered if he was visited by spirits. The toll booth guy then said a few months back a family did go missing on that mountain and no sign of them had been found. Was it their spirits visiting him? Or was the family still living? I wonder if they were looking for some food or something and were drawn to the hut. Perhaps something happened to them and they have memory loss or something. I don't know. My friend is convinced that the family that visited the cabin were spirits. He'll never forget that night in the cabin. In all his climbs and hikes, he has never experienced the paranormal again. This happened a decade and a bit ago, way back when I was an elementary or primary school student. I don't exactly remember how old I was, but I know I was about to be going into big school, as it were. Or maybe I was already in big school. Well, that's not really here nor there. Anyway, this happened a long time ago when I was a child. Anyway, this happened a long time ago when I was a child. Well, some will know that there seems to be a lot of ghost stories that relate to the fourth floor on any given building. Hi, Jay here. What I think that the author is trying to get at is the fact that the number four is synonymous with death. It is pronounced she, which is also how the word for death is pronounced. There is also another way to say the number four because of this reason, which is yon, and it seems to be preferred, especially when talking about floors in a building. Sometimes in Japan you will find that rooms in hospitals, apartment buildings, and even hotels don't exist due to that superstition that surrounds the number four. Like you might find room 101, 102, 103, then 105. Anyway, back to the story. My parents bought an apartment on the fourth floor of a building. They were never the type to worry about superstitions. I think that they were just happy to get a great deal on an apartment in a popular block for a price that was lower than they expected. It wasn't the biggest of living spaces, but my parents did a good job with the space we had available. They divided the apartment up into bedrooms for me, my parents and sister, and a study area, as well as a living room. One grey afternoon, my little sister was messing around in my dad's office chair in the study area. She was spinning around. I could always hear her squeaking when she messed around on that thing, and I cannot count the amount of times my dad told her not to play on it. He always got annoyed when she messed with the back support and adjusted the height on it, so naturally, as the older sibling, I go in there with the intention to tell her to knock it off. I entered the study, I called out my sister's name while looking at the office chair slowly rotating. From behind me, I heard my sister answer, What is it, bro? I spun around to face her, only to find that there was no one behind me. I then turned back to the office chair, which had rotated in my favor, only to see that there was no one occupying it. I did not understand what on earth was happening. It was almost as if my sister was in two places at once, but yet in neither. I didn't understand it, but it did spook me out a bit. But I have to admit, at this point, I was a massive fan of anything creepy at that age, so looking back on it, I guess I could chalk up what I saw to an overactive imagination. I might have misunderstood or something, so I decided to ignore it. Then a few days later, something else happened. I remember I was brushing my teeth in the bathroom, with the door open, and then suddenly, someone or something ran down the hallway past the bathroom. I looked out of the bathroom and tried to see who was running around so late but I couldn't really make it out. It looked like there was no one there. I did feel like I caught a glimpse at the last second of a child running down the hall. I remember that the kid I saw had really wild looking hair. By that I mean it was unkempt and messy. It was at that point I began to think to myself that perhaps 
it wasn't all down to an overactive imagination. Maybe what I experienced in the study, and also when I was brushing my teeth, was real. I will tell you why I thought that. It's because my sister was wearing a one-piece dress that night, and the girl, well, I think it was a girl, I saw that night was wearing a jacket. Although I didn't see that girl again, I certainly knew she was still around. I could hear her. If she wasn't spinning around on Dad's office chair or running up and down the halls, then she would be muttering something outside of my bedroom. It was like that until I moved out of Mum and Dad's place. I always felt like there was someone outside of our family living with us. If I'm honest, I feel as if that spirit followed me to my new place. I hear the pitter-patter of disembodied feet running up and down the hardwood floor of my hallway, and I live miles and miles from my parents' place. I'm not sure what's happening anymore, but I think I have company. When I was a kid, I was often told by my parents to close the curtains before it's dark. I'm sure I can't be the only kid who was told this. I always thought of it as my parents, especially my dad, just nagging me. It wasn't until I got older that I realized that it was a warning instead. I always closed the curtains when I was asked to do so. When I was in high school, I would shut myself upstairs in my room and play video games all night. Before I knew it, it would be dark out. Especially in winter. It got dark in winter quickly. On the night that all this went down, I finished up my game very late. I just didn't want to stop playing. I then looked at the window and thought, oh damn, I better close the curtains. It was very late and I think that my parents were asleep at the time. As soon as I looked out of the window, I froze. I saw something incredibly strange and frightening. There was something right outside my window. And it was a woman with long dark hair and a pure white face which was peering into my room. She was dressed in white clothing too. I felt as if she was a woman based on her appearance but I guess I could have been wrong about that. It was a person though, I'm certain of that. And that person was staring right at me. The creepy woman opened her mouth, as if to say, Ah, like you do when you're at the dentist's. And her mouth was huge. She stared at me in that silent scream, unblinking. And I couldn't take any more. I scrambled to my feet while screaming my own scream, and I blasted out of the door. I had a kind of reflex reaction to what I saw. I was so freaked out by what I saw, it was like my brain wasn't working right. I couldn't get my legs to work, I guess, as I ended up taking a tumble. I fell down the stairs. I was surprised to see my mother was still awake. She came out of the kitchen, looking shocked by the noise I was making. She called out to me and asked if I was okay. I told her about what I had just witnessed. I said, Mom, there's a strange woman outside of my window. Beyond that, I can't remember much else of what my mother and I spoke about as I was so worked up. I was absolutely terrified. My mother was more worried about the fall I had just had, but I remember only having a couple of bruises after it. After I calmed down a little, we both went upstairs to check if that strange woman was still there outside my window. Of course, when we went up there, there was no one there. There was no trace of anyone. My mum then asked me if I was sure about what I had seen. She even asked if I could have had a bad dream or maybe even a daydream of some kind. Well, I mean, I don't remember falling asleep, but if that's the answer, I'll happily accept it because that is better to me than seeing the paranormal or something I wasn't supposed to have seen. The only thing I question is the clarity of the memory of seeing that woman. It's so clear in my mind. 
I can remember her appearance so clearly. So it doesn't play out like a dream in my memories. I'm certain that I didn't see a living person because how could anyone be either that tall or have the ability to levitate? Surely no human dressed like that would climb up on a roof in a quiet neighborhood to give some high school kid a scare. Would it be worth it? Often on TV and in the older movies, you would see people with their faces painted white playing ghosts. They remind me of what I saw that night. If I see something like that on TV, I get these heart palpitations and I start to sweat. It's like my body remembers what I saw and I have an involuntary reaction. These days I make sure the curtains are closed as soon as it begins to get dark out. I get really edgy around dusk if I'm at some place where the curtains are open. Also gaps. I want to talk about gaps for a second. If there are gaps in the curtains, then that's a big no for me. I've started to develop an irrational fear of them. In the morning, I don't open the curtains stood in front of them. I stand to the side and open them. I cannot stand to be stood that close to the window. I think that if you look out of the window at night when it's dark, you might find a real person peeking in, not a ghost. And that's just as scary as seeing a ghost if you ask me. Or you might end up seeing something that you think about for the rest of your life, just like I did. I feel like what I saw that night has permanently changed me.